Well, earlier this week, Limpopo Health MEC Popira Matuba visited Gwenani Secondary School in Sekhakapeng to monitor the first day of the new academic year. During her visit, she is sought to address the issue of teen sexuality and pregnancies. And in the speech, the MEC addressing girls in, in a video that went viral where she told them to open their books and close their legs. While well, part of those comments have sparked outrage, many saying she's putting the burden of sexual responsibility on girls. The CEO of Soul City Institute for Social Justice, Pina Kodisang, joins us to give us their reaction on it. So, um, you know, when we look at the video that has gone viral of the MEC, she's specifically addressing young girls and she's telling them to, you know, close their legs and open their books. There is, however, another clip of the MEC where she's seen addressing both girls and boys. Does that context change the response of an organization like Soul City to the MEC's comments? Not necessarily. Um, I think there's, there's a way in which we can address the issue of pregnancy teenage pregnancy in particular. And for the most of 2021, we were vocal about addressing the issues in a comprehensive way, because we need to take into consideration the fact that we live in a country that has a rape culture. We live in a country where young women are most vulnerable to violence. They are most vulnerable to social ills. They are most vulnerable to a lot of um, gender norms that, you know, uh, violate their rights to um, bodily autonomy, their rights, you know, to freedom of expression in how they dress, in how they live their lives. So each time an officer, uh, and I'm talking now about ministers, um, you know, MECs, people in leadership, they are accounting officers. So each time an accounting officer does not start with taking into account the fact that in a country we have a failed system that has produced and reproduced this failure um, for young women, that the system will keep exposing them to violence. If we don't start with acknowledging that and we start by saying to young women, close your legs, we are then shifting the blame to them for these pregnancies that are happening. And I'll tell you why I'm talking about the system, because we need to acknowledge that there's a system failure. There are young women who go to clinics and they find that contraceptives at the time they need them are not there. There are young women, we know with COVID also, that you know we prioritized um, treat, um, the campaigns where we're prioritizing prevention of the spreading of COVID-19. And in some instances, there were uh, resources that were not available to make sure that young people get access to condoms at the time they need them and all the, you know, the necessary commodities. So when an accounting officer stands in front of young children and tells them, even if it's an advice from a parent, tells them to close your legs, you are assuming that all of them, the reason uh, they are pregnant is because they are willingly opening their legs. And even the vulgar in the language, I think we need to use, you know, uh, language that is different, language that is accommodative and educative. I don't think, you know, the intentions in saying those really were about helping young people understand that we need to prioritize, you know, other choices as young people other than having sex. And, and, and so I, I really, whether it was addressing boys and girls, the language for me is problematic, but also it doesn't take into account the reasons that we find young people falling pregnant mm -hmm. over and above those that are going and, and, and having unprotected sex. There are parents who've come out in defense of the MEC and have said this is language that is used in communities. This is the kind of language that, um, you know, a, a mother or a father would use when addressing their children and when they're trying to call them to order effectively. Then I, I understand why we have so many problems in our country. 
if that's the language that parents use to communicate with their children, it, 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 I understand why children will not be talking to their parents. If you speak to young people, and I speak to young people every day in my line of work, one of the biggest issues that they raise is that we don't talk to our parents. Our parents don't talk to us. You can't talk at your child. You need to talk to your child. That was talking at them, not talking to them. So there, there will be a miscommunication when the message is like that. So if there's the communication that is being used, it needs to change. Parents need to be educated on how to talk to their children about sexual reproductive health and rights. It can be the language. It, it cannot. It's not. Mm -hmm. It's not appealing. It's not. It's not even getting the message across. Of course, you know you're broaching an issue that, again, a lot of parents find difficult to have conversations with their children about, and that's, um, you know, sexuality, their children's sexual debut, and because there is this veil of secrecy around it you find that young people are often getting advice from outside the home and not necessarily from, you know, that trusted space within the home. It explains, and, and, and that is why it's easier than, sorry about the background noise, uh, I'm at the airport, we've just landed, I came from a meeting and I tried to find a, a quiet space, so if the background noise is coming through, I apologize, but I, I'm saying, the reason then young people find advice from somewhere else and not from the parents is because of the tone that is used. We need to get to an understanding as parents that our children go through transitional phases. You know, they start as children, they get to a stage where their bodies are developing, they are trying to understand their bodies. So we need to be accommodative of those developments and the changes that young people are going through. And the language that we use is that of educating and not threatening and not even belittling or even ignoring the fact that what is happening to them physically is not what they chose. It's a natural process of life. So when a young woman goes through menstruation and her breasts are growing, and she's developing, her body is getting fuller. We need to understand that the way we address it is not, you know, how some of us learned about menstruation where your grandmother says, now that you are growing old, if you sleep with boys, you're gonna fall pregnant and we can see that you are already playing with boys because now there's blood coming out when it's not necessarily true because blood is not coming out because you are playing with boys, but it's a natural process mm -hmm. and, and you're, you, know, you are developing as a young woman. So the reason parents find it difficult is because maybe they themselves never had the opportunity of being taught how to do it because from generation to generation, what is passed on is this tone, this language. And there are programs. In Seoul City, we had um, a, a, a parenting program where we taught exactly about these things, how to communicate, how to teach young girls about coming of age, how to talk to young boys about the coming of age, you know, the, the, how their bodies are developing and what they need to do when they see all these developments and cope with that development because it's also frustrating for the young people. Their voices are changing, they are growing hair on their faces, or pubic hair everywhere. For them, it's a frustrating process, but we can make it a process that they enjoy and embrace. Going forward, and you know, the MEC is going to continue to have the opportunity to speak to many other young people. And again, this is an issue that has divided parents. Some believe there was nothing wrong with the way she addressed the matter, while others, of course, take the view that Seoul City has. What advice would you have for the MEC? What considerations do you think uh, she must take into account? So the MEC, honestly, there's no excuse to use that tone. Um, there are so many programs uh, that they can engage with. She could even reach out to your Seoul Cities, your Love Life, and other organizations in terms of what is the, the correct way to address issues of sexual reproductive health and rights in a comprehensive way. We don't single out an issue. We address the comprehensive nature of the issue. We talk about you know, body, um, bodily autonomy so that for those who are rich, we are accommodating them as well. Those who say, I'm matured enough, there's a 17-year-old, 18-year-old who feels that they are matured enough to start having sex. So you need to communicate with them in a way that says, 
if you feel you are ready, you are matured enough, go to a clinic, get advice, you know, go and ask a, a nurse to help you choose the right method for you to prevent pregnancy because there's no need for you to fall pregnant. You can prevent being pregnant. It is something that is preventable. You can prevent uh, getting infected with HIV. You can prevent getting infected with STIs. Don't speak to them about closing the lids because you are closing everything else in that talk. You are not opening them up to learning the ways they can prevent and be safe. And there are options. You can opt not to engage in sex at all and still enjoy being a young person. But they need that advice from somebody who's open-minded, who's able to accommodate the fact that some of them are ready to experiment and they want to learn how to do it safe. So uh, we can advise that maybe she needs to speak to colleagues, uh, such as colleagues in Seoul City and other organizations to say, how do we address young people in a way that leaves them feeling that they got the best advice from an adult. CEO of the Seoul City Institute for Social Justice, Fina Kodisang. And of course, that's where we'll leave it for tonight.